Okay, so uh, hello everybody. So I'm sorry, but I don't speak Vietnamese at all. <laughs> it will be in English. But, uh, I see that all slides have been uh, uh, translated, so that's very nice. And thank you very much for that. So, uh, well, uh, I think we uh, just presented me on the uh, just before. Uh, so as I don't know what she said because it was in Vietnamese, so I couldn't understand. But uh, well, I hope it it was clear for you. The main thing is that I've been uh, working in electromobility now for many many years, and then I have also participated to a lot of implementation of uh, EV systems uh, in the world. Okay, then uh, we can start with the first slides. Uh, so that just uh, to explain what we will uh, discuss today. Uh, if, well, electromobility is a real part of uh, all cleaner strategies now. Um, uh, uh, <laughs> the cleaner in many trees. So uh, we have to, to consider, before starting, we have to consider uh, several points in the situation. And uh, maybe you have been uh, already been made aware of that, but I would come back and to just to to, to have a, a global uh, look over the situation. First, that is that uh, electromobility is uh, for the time being, at least, and for many years probably, uh, it's not the only solution in transportation. So, all the strategies, the deployment strategies, have to consider the mix between uh, electromobilities and other transport motorizations uh, from uh, walking, human, <laughs> human motorization to, uh, well, fossil ones, <laughs> I, I, you know. Then all the strategies and all the projects uh, will have a long-term run. So it's impossible today, it's better to think about 10 years or 15 years of developing at least uh, electromobility. So we have to, to in, in these strategies, you have to design all the steps. That's one point. Another point is that uh, the objective of electromobility is not to have a lot of electric vehicles in the cities. Uh, it's, well, the idea is, the, 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 well, the problem to solve is to uh, satisfy the demand of the travelers. Mm -hmm. And it's also to uh, make them going uh, easily, quickly, uh, as in the best condition as possible to their destinations. So uh, EVs or electric vehicles, I mean, personal or individual uh, electric vehicles, uh, not the only option that way, because you have all, all the mass transport, which, as you know, many of them are electrified today. So, uh, and they are part of the strategies, of course, to put mass transport, uh, electric mass transport. And the last point, which is important, is to really understand that the technology on electric vehicles is not yet mature. Okay, so a lot of things will change in the next years and uh, you will have uh, to cope with this uh, evolution that will be in the future. So once you've uh, that in mind, we can uh, start on the, uh, on the course, uh, on the discussions, and uh, this will be, uh, I will, well, split, I split this discussion in three points. The first is uh, the, 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 well, to define the challenges and the key elements which are linked to the specific objectives, which gives the framework of the strategies. Then we will see the uh, first requirements, the preliminary requirements with the basic, basic thing that you need to take into account when thinking about uh, developing, deploying strategies. And then we will have a short look of the main deployment strategies that you can have, but we won't have, of course, time to go in details. So maybe we could uh, go to the next slide. Um, so we have, you have three pillars, which are the, uh, the main uh, basic uh, part of a strategy, and which represent, in each way, challenges. 
So you have first the politics and national strategies, okay, which are uh, uh, the, the, the global framework at the level of a country or of a local uh, strategy. You have challenges in economics and technical feasibility. We will come back on that later. And we will, you have also a social and societal expectation from and constraint from well, the population in general. And then this, all, uh, all these uh, challenges or pillars you know, are linked. And as you can see, well, politics and the social soci and societal are uh, linked with accessibility. Accessibility means uh, also uh, affordability as well, uh, which means that uh, you need to have uh, to, to take into account these uh, characteristics or these constraints, but you have also the constraints or, or the objectives on uh, to use uh, the way to use clean energy, you have all else and an environment purpose and so on. And on the on the other side, uh, the the challenge you have to solve between politics or the main type of challenge are more uh, technical ones, of course, about the autonomy, the adaptability, or the flexibility. That's the links between those, and between social and uh, economics. The challenges are more linked to interoperability of the systems, the fact that the low consumption uh, motor uh, motorization and so on. So. Uh, if you click, yes, uh, these challenges are also uh, related to uh, well larger strategies uh, because oh, <laughs> because uh, well uh, electromobility in fact as political level or, or, or high level is also linked to the independence of the country uh, regarding uh, fossil energies or fossil fuels. Okay, this is uh, the, well, for, for a lot of countries, this is the basic strategy or, or, or the basic uh, idea behind uh, going electromobility rather than well-being, which is another uh, global strategy of, uh, of the countries, the, the well-being of the citizens. And uh, also on the economics, of course, you have to, to consider the finance uh, side of the, the strategies. So these are the main uh, type of challenges which are uh, which apply uh, on electromobility. And if we go more in detail on the next slide, uh, you need to have some uh, uh, preliminary requirement. Uh, uh, first, I will start with the, the second one, the integration. Integration, okay. The integration with, uh, as I saw, as I told before, with uh, in other strategies. Uh, first, uh, do you have uh, national strategies on urban mobility planning? The NAMP. Uh, do they exist, or are there some uh, strategies? At the top level of the national countries, when well, I mean, if you are uh, in a, in a city, as we're talking today, uh, in, for instance, in Hanoi, do you have uh, national strategies related to uh, transport, but also energy, also uh, climate, as we have today, uh, or social welfare, and so on. So, uh, you need to have uh, all this in mind, and of course. Uh, if there are these uh, strategies at the global level, then you have to take care of that because uh, quite often you have regulations coming from uh, or, or, or set up by these strategies or orientation issue. For instance, if you have uh, if you uh, want to to, to 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 have electric vehicles, you need to have a good uh, grid network at the national level. Otherwise, that won't. <laughs> that won't work, <laughs> okay, if you don't have the power, enough power, enough electricity power. So you need to include these, your own strategies in such large strategies. The same with the incentives, because quite often incentives are not done or, or allowed at the local level, they are regional and more, more often at the national level. So uh, to build the strategies, you have to know if such strategies do exist. 
at the national level, or if not, you have to think of what to do with the lack of strategy, lack of orientations. Clear orientation because a lot of uh, uh, ideas sometimes, but no real and concrete uh, thing or projects. That's the first thing. Then the second is to include the strategies or the, the in a, in a coherent, coherent way with uh, other uh, strategies at local level. Uh, for instance, if you have some uh, urban planning to do, as in, if you have some areas which are designed to 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 be to have to 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 have uh, residential uh, buildings, for instance, how do you manage? How do you prepare these new areas to be to 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 host uh, electromobility uh, systems uh, in the car parks or in the vehicle parking, uh, motorcycle, uh, car, and so on. Do you think that uh, uh, for, for, for the deliveries, uh, do, we, uh, do they have uh, electric uh, charging stations, for instance, and so on? So, in, and do you have the green network enough with enough power to go there? And so on, the same with commercial zones, the same with industrial zones. So they are all linked. And sometimes it's difficult to have a coherent uh, approach at the global city level. And then you have also all the environmental strategies, which are a bit different, but we, we, which also uh, put a framework uh, on electromobility development. Then I come back to the first point. Uh, since you have a lot of uh, different aspects, uh, you need to set up the cooperation with all actors, uh, internally and externally. Uh, we, we will go tomorrow, we will go in more detail on how to enable or to create an enabling environment uh, on these points. But uh, before that, you, you need to, uh, to make sure that uh, all the members, for instance, all the members of all the departments of the local authorities are represented or, 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 or participate to uh, the development of the strategies. Because you otherwise you could have uh, well, uh, some misunderstanding which blocked completely the systems. And of course, since the, the usually uh, well, uh, people in local authorities are not technical experts, they need to have external experts to go to, 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 to work with them and to include in the team, in the project team, all these experts, well, on the main activity sectors. And another thing uh, before this is that you, since it's new, since it's, uh, well, this will require, require as you know, uh, some uh, behavior, behavioral changes of the population of the future users, you need to be uh, prepared to uh, launch large promotional and support policies. Uh, so this has to be uh, well thought before uh, the launch of the strategy. So these are the first preliminary requirements. Then we can go to the second one, the next slide. Please. Thank you. There are more, more technical, these ones, but, and maybe you, you can, um, sorry, um, <clears throat> these are still at global level, but these requirements are necessary for starting or before developing the strategy. First, of course, and it's not quite easy uh, to have a, a good analysis of the future user, the future needs, and expectations. I talked just before about the uh, urban planning, for instance. So what will be the demography in this urban planning, in these new areas, for instance? Who will live there? Uh, how they will go to work? Uh, what are their expectations to go to work? And so on and so on. And well, it's not the case in Anai, but in some places you need to care about the topology because as you know, uh, electromobility is still uh, well, uh, dependent sometimes uh, of the topology of the cities and so on and so on. So you have to be clear on, uh, on 
what will be the future needs of the eventual potential users uh, in of any type that we use reliability. And of course, since uh, we are talking about uh, a, a new energy, uh, who is going to pay for the charging in for the old infrastructure? In fact, uh, who is going to pay for that? That's very important from the beginning because otherwise, if after having designed a very nice strategy, uh, there's nobody to finance the infrastructure. Infrastructure that will be uh, another. Uh, big big difficulty and it's not only for the beginning it's as i told before it's for 10 years so uh you have to be clear on how you will uh, consider this problem and how this will be uh finance and who is going to make the investment who is going to be the owners in the future of the child infrastructure so that's that's find that or at least to start really thinking about that before deploying a strategy uh, uh, the, the concrete strategy and of course as i also told before uh, you need to define what type of electrification for the various mobility modes but we will come back to back a bit later uh, and how they will be integrated in the mobility system in the future uh, and uh, in the sense of intermobility, inter inter uh, modality, yes, inter or multimodality eventually, or in term uh, interoperability and so on. So you have to define that not in detail, of course, but you have to think about that before starting the strategy itself. Then we can go on the next slide. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, what are, in fact, the uh, characteristics that you have to challenge uh, when establishing the strategy? Uh, well, just for instance, the, the first one, the autonomy. The autonomy, of course, uh, the anxiety range or the range of anxiety, <laughs> as you like, uh, uh, of the future users. But it's not only that, it's about the batteries, for instance, autonomy, of course, is linked to the batteries. And you know that uh, the cost of the batteries is going uh, down, even lithium, they are going down uh, since we expect really to have uh, batteries costing less than $100 per kilowatt hour uh, in a few years, very few years. But uh, about the, 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 the this battery problem, you have to think so I will uh, um, organize the second life of the battery, how you will organize the uh, recycling of the batteries, the managing of the batteries, and so on. So the autonomy is linked to the batteries, the performance of the batteries, but also uh, what you will uh, do with the batteries. And it's the same with reliability. You have to think, well, Electric vehicles are reliable. Motors are well known and so on. Of course, more reliable than uh, just, uh, ice cars because there's less uh, parts in there. But to ensure the reliability, you have also to ensure the maintenance, the repairing and so on. And you have also, how you do you will uh, consider these points uh, in your strategy because they are important. Because if you want to, to, to construct a kind of a value chain on this uh, electromobility, you need to think about how to manage how to, uh, the exploitation. And of course, another uh, uh, difficulty challenge is the cost of ownership. So there are a lot of studies about that, and we know today that uh, well, the cost of ownership is going uh, down and down every year, as I told before, uh, batteries are cheaper and cheaper. So we know that today, uh, for many, many vehicles, not large ones, not big trucks, but uh, the ownership, uh, the cost, this cost is, uh, well, I would say is uh, balanced uh, with the, the, the ownership of ICE vehicles. 
so in a few years, five years or, or something like that, depends on the type of vehicle. But it's another point which is important. And of course, you have the challenges out availability of energy of the infrastructure. Uh, how will you uh, deploy this infrastructure? Who will be in charge of this infrastructure? And so on, I told before. You have to be uh, also careful with the energy mix. And I think we you already have this uh, in mind. But also uh, the required power, because if you <clears throat> if your strategy is to uh, to have a clean energy, uh, well, I mean clean transportation, of course it depends on the energy mix itself. So it's another point which is important to see how you will produce the energy. Then uh, will you have enough power to do that, and the cost of the production and distribution. So these are challenges. And the last point, uh, uh, all the, the elements linked to the organization of the mobility, the modal share, what type of modal share you have, what you will have in the future, what do you expect, what do you, uh, what is your uh, objective or targets in the future, what are the uh, the road uh, infrastructure, the, 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 the quality of the road, for instance, uh, the length, the, the, the width of the roads, and so on. And do you have, uh, or do you think about uh, sharing vehicles? How do you manage the fleets? What are the uh, public and private relations? All these points have to be also challenged and think, thought about uh, when you deploy the strategies. If we go on the next one, um, just uh, all the challenges that you have to take uh, in consideration are more social ones or environmental ones. And I just talked a bit before, but uh, how do you uh, make people aware of the benefit of what they can attend, expect uh, from the vehicles? From the new vehicles, how do you realize inclusiveness? How do you how, how you do? How do you uh, take on board all people? Uh, do you have a specific uh, uh, actions towards uh, people with uh, reduced mobility, for instance, or seniors, aged people, and so on? What are your objectives on quality of that? What do you expect on safety, security, pollution, and so on? And of course, about affordability, because uh, uh, we talk, uh, I talk about the cost of ownership. Uh, it's not only the uh, only because uh, when you take electric buses, uh, you have uh, tickets. And of course, uh, are they affordable? Uh, could people uh, buy these tickets? Uh, so. We have to, to, a uh, strong uh, effort on tarification and, of course, on incentives, although these are not always uh, possible at the local level. So uh, we can go on the next one <coughs> on the principle. So we, we now the, the last part uh, about the uh, deployment, the, the principles when you deploy uh, strategies. So uh, first, well, I, I just choose two uh, extreme uh, sides. Uh, you have the choice, or you could have the choice between two uh, ways. Uh, either you prioritize uh, high used vehicles, which is more a certain approach, uh, because I, uh, the vehicles which are the most used are uh, mass transports, uh, goods vehicles, and so on. Or do you priorities, priorities, sorry, what we could say the, the proliferation, which is a bottom-up approach. So it depends, of course, of the cities and of your strategy. We are come back just after that uh, on these points. Uh, so uh, I talked already about the, the, the charging infrastructures and the promotional efforts. Uh, but uh, in both ways, 
or in both, uh, especially if you, you, you take the proliferation uh, aspects or when you are at this side, at this level, uh, you will need to have uh, very strong uh, promotional efforts. There's plenty of them, we will see later, but cost also, not a lot, but it costs time and uh, money, of course. And uh, well, in parallel, you have to think, but we talk about that, about the, the, the charging infrastructure. And another point and, uh, is that uh, local authorities have to be uh, to, to to be exemplar uh, to to show the good way the good examples. So that means that the municipality must also uh, for its own uh, activities actions uh, show the good ways and turn the the, the the fleet to electric vehicles, of course, uh, to uh, to organize activities so that uh, people are more using uh, electric vehicles to go to work. Uh, um, so that you uh, organize building and as I before, I told before. Uh, and also you can have uh, regulations for suppliers and construction authorizations, because uh, for instance, uh, you can have a kind of uh, bonus for suppliers. We, who used electric vehicles to supply uh, the furnitures for for uh, the, the the goods for 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 the municipality or for the permits to construct? Uh, you can also oblige the uh, the constructor, the builders, to uh, put uh, electric or charging stations in the new buildings or in the renovation buildings, and so on and so. On. so the, the municipality has also, uh, in parallel to all these strategies, has also uh, actions, specific actions that could uh, help uh, showing what is possible at the, the development of EVs. Then we can go on, on the first type of strategies. On the next slide. Also, so uh, the first well extra, uh, side is to prioritize the vehicles which are the most used. Of course, well, we see that. Uh, so uh, the most high vehicles are, uh, of course, the mass transport vehicle and all uh, vehicles which are uh, organizing fleets. So, of course, you know, uh, well, about uh, uh, electric buses uh, from BRTs to uh, lines which feed the buses, but so including private companies. Uh, you can help them, as it is done in some countries, to, uh, to, to, to turn or to change their vehicles uh, to electric vehicles. And uh, you have also uh, the possibility and to, to priority to, to, to install, uh, to facilitate the uh, installation of charging facilities in depots, in depot or, uh, and of course, uh, the uh, maintenance resources which goes with this, uh, with the charging or the electric motorization, which means to uh, train the drivers, train the maintenance people, train the staff, and so on and so on. Because you have also to train, for instance, the uh, people in charge of the planning of the lines, because uh, electric vehicles and electric buses have not the same autonomy as uh, ice buses, on gas uh, buses, for instance. So uh, it's a new way of planning. It's a new way of maintaining. It's a new way. Well, so you need to, to train all these people. So this is one side. And the second uh, important side is that it's quite easy to, or it's, well, it's rather easy to convince uh, owners of fleets collective, private collective, or commercial fleets, and especially, well, for instance, taxis, 
or our delivery system, it's uh, for the goods, it's easier to convince, convince them to uh, turn to electric vehicles because quite often they, uh, they are quite aware of the cost of the vehicles and the, the, the total cost of ownership. So they are often more ready to change and to turn to electric vehicles. Uh, so uh, it's a good uh, approach and the uh, uh, approach which is visible for all to turn or to, to have them on board and to turn or, or to ask them to turn to electric vehicles. So, and uh, another, uh, another important point in this type of strategies is to develop uh, electric hubs on terminals or main stations. Uh, since if you have uh, electric buses, for instance, uh, you have uh, probably at terminals or near the depots or near the main stations, you have big charging stations, you have powers. So, you could develop electric hubs and terminals, electric bus, electric hubs being the well, not only a charging station, but also a place where you could find uh, several uh, services related to uh, electric mobility. So this is one way and uh, which is uh, often used because uh, it is this top down, top down approach which seems to be uh, well the easiest way, uh, not not probably not the the the, the, the cheapest, but uh, the easiest way to start uh, electromobility strategies and to uh, spread the uh, electromobility in the city. And on the contrary, you have the second one. The other uh, next slide. Please. <laughs> is uh, the what I call the proliferation, which means the, the bottom-up approach, which could be uh, well, well of course need to to to, to develop adequate uh, charging infrastructure, but this approach can be used or or it's worthwhile uh, when uh, you have a lot of uh, uh, vehicles and you can, uh, well, or they are not so expensive to, it is not so expensive to, uh, to buy electric vehicles. I mean, the difference between uh, normal vehicles and uh, well, classical vehicles and electric vehicles is not so uh, large and especially uh, for instance in Vietnam where you have a lot of motorcycles and well uh, a lot of ASEAN countries uh, when you have uh, so many uh, motorcycles this is possible uh, such uh, strategy is possible to start with I mean not well quite often you have to 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 to, to mix the two strategies, but to, to have them more or less going in, in, in parallel. But <clears throat> in the case of uh, Vietnam, for instance, where you have a lot of motorcycles, uh, well, the, the cost to change or to turn to change a classical or ice motorcycle to uh, an electric motorcycle is not so expensive. I mean, it's expensive for the people, but in general, it's not so expensive. And then, if you start on these strategies, of course, the, the main and the main problem is to have charge faster, which will satisfy demand. Uh, of course, you have you need to have that on streets and on in car parks or, or in uh, in parking in parking areas in general, whatever they are, public public, private, commercial, or industrial. So you need to understand, you need to ensure the availability of charging facilities. So uh, you can have, uh, you, you have different apps which uh, exist 
to know if the charging facilities are free, are available, are working, and so on. And you have also to ensure the interoperability, which is very important since, uh, well, it's really, uh, especially for, for smaller vehicles, um, you need to, to ensure that everybody goes to each charging station, whatever are the owner of the charging station. Of course, uh, it's the company one or company two or company three. Uh, you need to have the same um, possibilities to charge for to pay or to, 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 to plug uh, your uh, vehicle to the charging facility. So this is these are the main problem, in fact, to ensure this interoperability and to have enough charging facilities. And of course, uh, as I told before, in new and renovated buildings, it's well, you, you, you need to have these uh, facilities. And you need also to be sure that uh, people can, because it's, and we, we talk a bit of that tomorrow, but you have also the possibilities of swapping batteries, which is another uh, possible with small vehicles. So in that case, you have also to develop or, or to facilitate the development of uh, this swapping um, management. And of course, uh, in this strategy, since you are going bottom up, you can't uh, uh, deploy everything everywhere at the same time. So you have to determine what is the uh, deployment, what are the steps, what are how are you going to develop uh, according to the well, urbanistic or urbanism of the city. As, do you start with attractive areas? Do you have a technical constraints? like the uh, availab availability of energy. I mean, you, you can have energy everywhere, but not at the same cost. So uh, there are some technical constraints to build a charging instance in some place. So uh, you have to define and to have a, a, um, a real uh, detailed approach on the uh, availability of, 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 on these technical constraints, not only the energy, but also the space uh, to have the stations. Uh, do are they on the main flows uh, and so on and so on. And if you start with that uh, strategies, you need also to have uh, regulations and to make them apply. So that means to be very strict, very rigorous in the application. Not well, you are not obliged to go to the congestion zone like in London, but uh, you need to have a control access control zone. And uh, for instance, also, what about the, the parking and charging uh, authorizations? Uh, well, not to have the charging for a long time or on the necessary uh, of the charging stations. So, in this way, in this strategy you have some uh, points to verify. And as I told before, sometimes you mix the two. Uh, you start with buses, for instance, then you, you add the stations. Some stations, you can put some uh, charging uh, facilities for other vehicles and so on and so on. So sometimes it goes both, but in other cities, uh, they start with first the, the top-down approach, which is, as I said before, quite easiest and to show uh, the electromobility, and then they go and they facilitate the profit proliferation. If we can go to the next slide, which please. So thank you. So I I, I wanted just to have some uh, to give you some points about the the the, 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 the promotion uh, because there's a lot of ways to promote electromobility. You have first uh, well, classical promotion, okay, campaigns, events, uh, specific days, uh, days without car. Uh, you can go uh, a special uh, courses in schools, for instance. You can uh, develop challenges between people, competitions, 
uh, between uh, areas in the city. You can have a, a lot of uh, way of, of way uh, of ways, sorry, to 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 promote and to show uh, the advantage, the benefits of electromobility. You can block some streets, for instance, for a while, and so on. You can also, of course, uh, have uh, or provide some advantages. Normally, they are limited in time, not for a long time. They are limited in time, uh, like a free parking for uh, electric cars that is beyond in, in many, many cities, for instance. Free charging is uh, more questionable. Uh, I think now, well, it has been done. It still can be done. It depends on the cost of energy, but uh, it's very difficult to come back after that. So, uh, well, it has, I, I put it, but uh, I'm not really in favor of free charging, uh, except, for instance, on delivery base for, uh, for vans uh, and for transport of goods. You can have also some promotional uh, actions. For instance, like uh, well, testing periods for me is uh, well in some cities that has been done. Uh, just uh, inviting people to for a while to test electric vehicles. So them with the the, the the keys of their vehicles, they gave they, they they gave the the keys to the administration, and then in, in, in the, the, and then in turn they have uh, keys for electric vehicles so they will test the vehicle and only this vehicle and not not use their own because the keys are uh, at the local authority and they test the vehicles for one month two months three months and then uh, after that they, they, they give back the keys and and sometimes they will buy uh, an electric vehicle you could do that also with uh, with the students. We you, you you can have technical courses for the students because it's important uh, um, uh, to 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 explain to for instance to the students in automotive uh, courses uh, to, to to explain clearly uh, how it works an electric vehicle and what are the well and i mean not at the university level for instance but just at the uh, lower level uh when you when you train uh, technicians for repairing for maintenance and so on it's very important and sometimes it's not done and in the same way you have to encourage startups and garages because there's a lot of, of uh, people in the garage who, who don't know we don't know uh, anything about electric vehicles so you know you need also to have specific um, actions or, or capacity building reinforcement of knowledge uh, to these peoples so that's some of uh, promoting and supporting actions and uh, the last uh, slide please uh, just some uh, uh, some more actions. If you can change, uh, turn the next slide. Thank you. And uh, the main thing for me is in the slide is to you need to have uh, uh, a well trained uh, local authority staff in all domains. Well, regarding, of course. Uh, energy, uh, well, uh, electric, electromobility. And in many, many cases, uh, it's very important to, before starting, as I told you before at the beginning, that you need to have a representative of all uh, department or activity from the local authorities in electromobility project. And sometimes, and very often, it is necessary to start first, before all, to uh, train these people uh on electromobility because otherwise this uh well they, they they won't be uh much involved uh in the uh in this process and also you have to give them the right tools and methodologies for this type of project of course not to, for project management in general but what are the right indicators what are the what is the uh right 
evaluation methodology, uh, not only to, to, to see if the project is going well, but also to understand and how you will help scale the project in other areas of the of the city, for instance, especially when you go on proliferation, what has been what went well in some areas, not so well, what are, are you change and so on. So it's really a kind of uh, well, this type of uh, methodologies have to be specifically for electromobility have to be also uh, well learned or well known by the people in charge of the deployment of the strategies. Then I will stop there and wait for your questions. I hope it's have not been too long or too 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 time too too much you and uh, you can see that well just uh, one thing on the left up that's the first electric vehicle which was uh, between Belgium and France. Okay, thank you very much and I'm waiting for your question. Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Dominiquez for very comprehensive and uh, uh, informative presentations on the how and what step to uh, to be implemented or to be uh, taken into account for develop uh, de develop and uh, implement the uh, uh, e-mobility strategy. I uh, thank you very much. Kính thưa các anh chị, thì chúng ta vừa mới nghe bài trình bày của của anh Đông Môn Lý Khoe về cái 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 việc mà các cái bước xây dựng chiến lược phát triển phương tiện điện như thế nào các cái nguyên tắc các cái rào cản à, cũng như là các cái khía cạnh cần phải xem xét trong những cái trong cái bước mà xây dựng và thực hiện cái chiến lược phương tiện điện thì không biết là các quý vị đại biểu và các anh các chị có ai có uh, câu hỏi gì hay là có cái um, cái nội dung gì cho rõ và có thể giải thích không ạ à? cần cần anh à, đông đi quen giải thích thêm không ạ thì chúng ta có thể đặt câu hỏi ạ à? Uh, so since uh, since we're waiting for another uh, participant to uh, to have the question, so may I have one concerns or or raise one? Uh, I think many concern about the uh, uh, to implementation the the EM strategy. So we will need to in, uh, uh, involvement of the many stakeholder. So can you uh, have some experience or or, or best practice? Uh, how do we uh, mobilize the involvement of another stakeholder and, and how can we promote the uh, private and public sector in uh, promote the EV development? Okay. Um, well, if I may just uh, uh, not escape the questions, but <laughs> or the answer, but uh, this is the topic of what I've uh, I will uh, teach to well discuss tomorrow, so yeah. you will have time <laughs> for, for for the answers tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, but <laughs> the, well, uh, it's uh, well. I still have uh, twenty minutes uh, to to discuss of that tomorrow or uh, half an hour. So uh, maybe we can we can wait for tomorrow because okay. I, I I agree it's a very very important thing. À, kính thưa các anh các chị thì à, chúng ta vừa mới một nghe bài trình bày rất là tổng quan à, về cái các cái bước mà thực hiện à, xây dựng thực hiện cái chiến lược phát triển cái giao thông vận tải xe điện à, thì cũng rất là lần tiếc là chương trình đã không kịp bố trí à, à, phiên dịch để để à, có thể là giúp và quý vị đại biểu cũng như là các học viên Uh, có thể hiểu rõ hơn nữa và về những cái bước thực hiện thế thì là um, chúng ta vừa mới nghe về cái nội dung là um, các cái cách tiếp cận các cái uh, thách thức uh, đối với chiến lược phát triển chế điện như thế nào uh, và các cái cách tiếp cận ra làm sao cách tiếp cận từ cái uh, chiến lược quốc gia 
từ các cái lợi ích uh, chính trị hay mục tiêu chính trị như thế nào và sau đấy thì là um, có thể rằng là đi đến uh, các cái uh, um, xây dựng các cái uh, lồng ghép vào cái chiến lược ngành hay là hay là các cái chính sách hỗ trợ phát triển thế thì anh uh, Doboni uh, cũng đã đưa ra hai cái uh, phương pháp tiếp cận chính là phương pháp tiếp cận từ trên xuống và phương pháp tiếp cận từ dưới lên ấy. thì phương pháp tiếp cận từ trên xuống thì là chịu tập trung vào cái uh, những cái um, cái thiệp vào À, các cái à, loại phương tiện hay là các cái chủ sở hữu những cái phương tiện mà khối lượng lớn để mà có thể hỗ trợ có thể là um, gọi là hỗ trợ về mặt chính sách hay là hỗ trợ về các cái hạ tầng kỹ thuật để cho những cái đội phương tiện hay là những cái nhà cung cấp dịch vụ về giao thông vận tải à, có thể là chuyển đổi cái phương tiện đi sang à, sử dụng phương tiện à, điện à, và một cái phương pháp tiếp cận là phương pháp tiếp cận từ dưới lên là chúng ta có thể cung cấp các cái tiện ích hạ tầng khác và sau đấy thì à, có thể à, hỗ trợ à, À, khi mà khi mà khi mà cái giá của phương tiện à, giao thông điện nó không quá đắt và một trong những cái à, cái cái cơ hội của Việt Nam à, nói chung cũng như là các cái nước châu Á à, Việt Nam nói riêng và các nước châu Á nói chung là chúng ta có rất nhiều à, à, xe máy điện thì thì đấy là một trong những cơ hội của chúng ta thì nếu mà à, theo phương pháp tiếp cận của anh từ dưới lên thì là chúng ta có thể là um, cung cấp các cái hạ tầng à, tiện ích rất là và có thể là miễn phí hoặc là cung cấp các cái um, cái, cái, cái 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 hỗ trợ tài chính về 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 phí đổ phương tiện chẳng hạn thì để khuyến khích uh, người dân có thể là uh, dễ dàng chuyển đổi sang uh, phương tiện điện một cách uh, tương đối là từng huyện thì uh, sau đấy thì anh cũng có phân tích rằng là đối với cái 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 cái, uh, cái hình thức phương tiện uh, tiếp cận từ À, từ trên xuống thì thông thường là phần lớn các quốc gia đều bắt nguồn từ cái phương pháp tiếp cận này và đây là phương pháp tiếp cận rất dễ làm nhưng mà đây là một phương pháp tiếp cận và tiếp cận khá là tốn rất là nhiều chi phí à, so với cái cái phương pháp tiếp cận từ dưới lên là chúng ta lôi kéo người dân chuyển từ chuyển sang cái cái à, sử dụng phương tiện điện à, thế thì à, tuy nhiên thì rất là nhiều thành phố thì cũng đã có À, sử dụng lồng ghép cả hai cái phương pháp tiếp cận này ở một cái mức độ nào đấy à, để đảm bảo phát triển à, phương tiện điện. À, thì ngày mai thì anh cũng sẽ có một bài trình bày à, về làm các cái à, cái công cụ quản lý cụ thể như thế nào và lôi kéo sự tham gia của các bên ra làm sao à, để mà để mà có thể là phát triển được cái hạ tầng à, trạm sạc điện cũng như là các cái hạ tầng khác phục vụ cho cái cái à, à, cái phát triển cái cái mục tiêu phát triển phương tiện điện ạ. Thế không biết là các anh các chị học viên thì thì em cũng xin phép được tóm tắt một cái số một nội số, số nội dung mà kịp ghi chép ở đây như thế và kể cả cái file ghi âm của của anh Domoni Khoe cũng như là cái bài trình bày của anh thì sẽ được uh, uh, chương trình chuyển lên cái cái website và chúng ta có thể là đi lên đấy uh, chúng ta có thể là tham khảo ạ không biết là các quý vị đại biểu và các anh chị học viên thì có ai có câu hỏi nào dành cho cái nội dung về thực hiện cái thực hiện và xây dựng và thực hiện cái chiến lược phát triển giao thông điện đó không ạ? If I may add something. Yes. Yeah. yeah, just be, just about your, your your questions. Just uh, you asked well some examples, for instance. Even if we come back to that tomorrow, but uh, well, some challenges uh, in terms of integrating immobility. E well, there, there are plenty, of course, but uh, very important are, for instance, the remodeling of the bus routes, for instance. Okay, because. Uh, uh, when you have uh, uh, electric buses, quite often, when if if you don't design a new line like BRTs and so on, but uh, when you try to put uh, electric buses in cities, for instance, the difficulty is uh, that you have to redefine the routes of the buses because 
of the topology, because of the autonomy, because etc. Mm -hmm. etc. Et so this is very important because uh, you have to think about a new design, a new way of uh, preparing the basis routes, uh, the basis exploitations, and so on. So this is one of, of the challenges that uh, technical challenges. The other ones are, are, are easier because, well, I, if you put uh, uh, or if you train people in the maintenance, for instance, it, it's possible. But all this exploitation, the management of the exploitation, the definition of routes is very challenging. That's one example. Uh, I will uh, show you more. Another, uh, if you have uh, the, the, the reluctance or the resistance from a, a specific set of stakeholders. For instance, if you take taxi, taxis, once, uh, we, we, we explore the way to uh, electrify taxis in Casablanca, for instance. Okay, that's not a problem to put, uh, if they have incentives and so on. But the difficulty was that the organization of the taxi uh, in Casablanca is very specific, or in Morocco in general, is very specific in the main towns, of course, of, because uh, there are several drivers, several owners, and so on and so on. So it's complicated. The same with, for instance, with, uh, well, it, when you address uh, uh, private fleets, for instance, you have to understand how this fleet works. And sometimes it's quite long to convince the people, uh, especially when you have these taxis, this type of taxis, because the, the drivers, of course, are not the owners, and the owners of the car are not the owners of the license in Casablanca or in Morocco. Uh, so it's a bit complicated to, 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 to convince people to turn to uh, e-taxis. Uh, more, it's more, more difficult than the technical aspects. And in other cities, for instance, is the, not only the cost, but the, 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 the way to think, uh, especially in informal transport or paratransit, uh, to electrify paratransit is always a question of uh, changing uh, minds, uh, have a new uh, approach of the uh, organization of these transportation modes. So uh, you can have some resistance some resistance from uh, these users uh, well uh, but I, I would say that the, the resistances are, are more in general the difficulties are more in general in the change uh, of behavior or change of practices change of habits rather on technicals so except for uh, the availability of energy which is also another another major challenge. For instance, we, 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 in, we, we worked with uh, a big company uh, delivering uh, mails and goods, light goods in London. And their main problem, they were turned to electric vehicles, no problem. But their main problem was the uh, availability of energy. Because to do that, they, uh, the, the, the green manager uh, the grid company managing uh, the grid, the company managing the grid asked them uh, two million uh, English pound uh, <laughs> to, uh, to 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 upgrade the grid to give them enough power. Yeah. That was a challenge, okay, because it was in the city center and uh, very difficult. So sometimes you have very different challenges, which depends on the configuration of the city. That's uh, and the electromobility is not the same everywhere. Uh, well, the, the strategies are not the same everywhere. So you have to develop a very uh, adapted strategies. But we, we probably we will a bit we will come back a bit uh, on this point tomorrow. Yes, I think you. I agree with you that the, the for the strategic we should see develop on this this specific the city uh, uh, features then we can adapt this and we, we have some uh, measure to overcome the main conscious but it's quite interesting that the, uh, you said that uh, in in vietnam we may have some uh, do you have any some kind of suggestion for for the government uh, 
that we have some like incentive, economic incentive or something like that to uh, to to encourage the uh, public transport uh, companies or uh, any like tourism companies uh, and or uh, delivery company who, who own the very uh, very large uh, number of vehicles uh, to uh, to do some step to uh, uh, convert to EVs vehicle. I, I think you have uh, a lot of uh, well, uh, yes. There are some uh, uh, well practical ways for Vietnam because you have a specific uh, a specificity, which is the proliferation of motorcycles, for instance. And then the strategies uh, in Vietnam must be based on that point. Uh, how will you turn uh, this on electromobility? It's well, you have several ways. It's for, you need to go more in detail to do that. But uh, and especially uh, what I talked before about the, the battery swapping, which could be a way to avoid uh, too many uh, uh, charging stations. And a way also to to have some secure uh, approach uh, for for because if you can take away the battery of the motorcycle, uh, you can uh, well change of course change battery. You can have at home like other other well electric uh, device. You can have several batteries and then and then change them. Uh, once the battery is empty, for instance, so you can go further. You have, you can go uh, well. You can drive more uh, longer longer distances. Uh, you can also take them home to to charge them, and so on and so on. So it's uh, that could be uh, a way, which is specific for me uh, to your country. Yes, I think you very much. Uh, for 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 those cases, à, không biết là nếu mà chúng ta không có câu hỏi nào nữa thì uh, thank you Dominic request uh, for the presentation so we will uh, see you tomorrow for further discussions on the uh, how the public uh, and private partnerships and how to engage the uh, another stakeholder uh, into the EV development strategy. Thank you very much for the sharing a very comprehensive and informative presentation today. Thank you. Thank you and bye-bye everybody because uh, I will leave you since I am not very familiar with Vietnamese yes. language. Bye-bye everybody and thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>